and welcome to the Two Spool for School podcast. I'm your host, Lo, and if it, you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad to see you again. Pull up a chair, grab a drink. And if you are a first-time viewer, um, welcome to this space. I'm so happy to meet you and spend some time talking about yarny, wonderful things. Um, this is a primarily knitting podcast, but all of the crafts abound. Um, there'll be weaving and crocheting and spinning, and uh, that might be it for this episode. Um, I'm sorry that I'm a week late. Uh, we had quite a few wrenches in our plans for the last uh, little under a month now. Um, our life got flipped, turned upside down. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about that when, uh, a little bit later in the show. Um, but first things first, let's get on to, you know, the fun, important stuff. Uh, a beverage, first of all. Um, I already poured this guy, and this is a uh, Kolsch from Burial, and it is in my uh, Charlotte Roller Girls uh, little I think it's a wheat glass here, um, although, you know, not a wheat beer. Um, and if you don't know Burial, Burial's um, a North Carolina brewery out of Asheville, and they've got a tap room here in Raleigh. They normally have the most, the longest and most existential names for their beers. But this one is only called Billows. But normally it's stuff like the never ending. Uh, sorrows of repentance. Like, it's it's really, really a fun place. They do a lot of really great um, goth-style art on the walls and their cans. Um, like the can art on this guy is pretty cool, but it's probably one of their tamer ones. Um, but yeah, anyway, it's a great beer. So uh, I thought I would do a local brewery this time instead of just the normal stuff that I tend to get from the uh, food line down the street. So um, let me start off with talking about what I'm wearing, which is also an FO. Yay! So this is the Summer Sorrel by Woolen Pine. And I finished this guy up maybe about a week ago. i give you a little twirl. So this is <clears throat> the 49 inch bust size and I have a 44 inch bust. So I'm thinking I may have been able to go down a size if I had wanted to. It's definitely very roomy, um, but it's very comfy. The neckline is a bit on the wider side. Um, so my bra straps keep wanting to poke out just a little bit. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna do anything about that, if I'm gonna maybe, do like a little crochet chain underneath there to uh, keep it in place or if it's fine the way it is because this is very much just a casual comfy shirt like as you can see kind of ended up with like an a-line shape um, at the bottom so there's no increases um, but I think it's just the way that this particular fiber and fabric worked out um, so the yarn was Space Cadet Yarns uh, in the Maya base, which is 80% uh, bamboo and 20% superwash merino. So that's why it's got like that crazy drape and that, that really nice like swishy A-line. Um, <clears throat> what else can I say about this? Um, I mean, I just really, really like the way it came out. It grew a ton when I blocked it um, down wise. Um, the pattern has you knit, I believe it's 13 inches for the body. And I stopped early and I think that I, I haven't measured it since blocking, but I think it's longer than that. Um, it's probably just about the longest I would like a top like this. Um, hits right at the top, top of my hips. If I'm on my tippy toes, you can kind of see. Um, and if you'll notice, there's like a crease down the middle. This is a very, I think it's the bamboo that makes this a uh, uh, fabric that's more likely to wrinkle and crease. But um, yeah, I'm really happy with the way that the colors kind of melted and pooled together. 
um, really comfy top haven't tested it in the heat heat yet so I don't know if that that 20% wool is gonna make it a little bit too warm uh, but I will report back because I'm I'm extremely interested in knowing how this holds up to the North Carolina heat which we are finally getting a break from this week thank you <laughs> so that is my one and only fo but I got a bunch of works in progress to show you so we will start with whatever I can grab first is this one all right so this is my oops, poking right through the organza bag there uh, this is the necklace top by Nayama Idu <clears throat> and I am knitting this in knit picks luminance lace in the colorway dedication so as you can see I put a little bit of work on this one since I saw you last last week we were just right after the back neckband and now we have a little bit of this cable going um, I like really like this one on the side here it's coming out really pretty um, so I am about half of a repeat of these guys away from the split so this uh, pattern has a split open back where it goes down to about the center back and then opens out in a triangle shape um, so uh, I'm getting pretty excited to get there this has been a little bit of a slog because this chart here is repeated three times and every time I get to the end I'm like oh okay back at the beginning um, so that that takes a little bit of the joy out of it for me um, but I've been trying to do one of these charts a day to kind of keep myself moving and now I'm on to the last one which doesn't isn't even a whole chart repeat so uh, and then I get to do exciting new stuff where I just build the one side out and then the other side and then it all gets seamed together and uh, I will have a top so um, if you haven't seen this before I added beading um, into the front here uh, it was called the necklace top I wanted to make it look like a necklace and I just thought the beads would be really fun so just made up my own beading pattern and yeah so my hope is that by the next time I see you this will be a finished object I would very much like this off my needles um, it is a top knit in lace and it is taking forever and quite honestly I am a little bored so <laughs> um, and more than that I just would really like to wear this before uh, the end of the summer which here in North Carolina will not be much of a problem as our summers go on forever so our Basinji co-host is a uh, kind of poking around in all my uh, <laughs> my finished or my works in progress and there goes the beagle so um, I did treat them early so that uh, they would give me a little bit of time and space uh, but living with dogs uh, <laughs> uh, let's move on to the next work in progress which is living in this <clears throat> zombie pinup girl bag that I made I uh, showed you last time I believe um, and this guy has gotten really big which is why he has to live in here now and it is my Brissa hat so this is a crocheted brimmed hat uh, made out of raffia and last time you saw this you we were right where this little uh, Cyberman is and so I've done most of the brim uh, and this is this is literally only about three rounds away from being done I, I really tried to get this guy finished before uh, podcasting today but um, the, the the rounds are getting really long so um, but I can model this for you finally where it oh I uh, uh, that makes me happy okay so as you can see it's just a little sun hat 
And it's got this uh, shell pattern along here. And then it's gonna have a little bit of that right at the, uh, the border, we'll give it a little bit of a scalloped edge. Um, so the yarn for, oh, the, the pattern is a uh, Brissa hat. I did say that, but I did not mention that the pattern is by Raquel and Isabel Vidore. Um, and I am using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook for this one. And this yarn is Hobie Raffaella in the color eggplant. Again, something I would really like to get finished before the summer is over. Um, but I've got lots of plans for brim tats for some reason. That is the thing that is uh, speaking to me right now. Um, so yeah, after this one is done, there will be another one to follow. So <clears throat> Let me pause for a second and go deal with uh, Luca, who is barking downstairs. I believe she would like to go out. Uh, her post-dinner uh, constitution. <laughs> so I will be right back. <sighs> Jasper just got the zoomies right as I got up. So it's always something, huh? <sighs> but wouldn't want it any other way. Love having dogs. <clears throat> Our next work in progress is the uh, Don't Panic Shawl by Nim Teasdale. Um, and I'm now working in parts of the Evoluta pattern, also by Nim Teasdale. And this guy was in the middle of the row earlier and I went ahead and finished that row out so I could show it to you guys. Um, and this is kind of funny right here. So this is where we were last time. I've put about an eighth of an inch on, uh, which sounds like nothing, but oh my God, these take forever at this point. So <laughs> that had to be at least two hours of work, if not three, even though it's about literally four rows. So um, yeah, not much to say about this. I was considering not even showing it, but it does strike a very pretty picture, doesn't it? So uh, <laughs> I'm really excited to work on this one again once I picked it up to um, work on that one row. And I think this will be getting a lot more attention once I finish that necklace top um, because it requires a lot of my attention and so does that. And when I have two projects that require a lot of attention, usually only one of them gets the work. Um, but this yarn is a hand spun lace single that I spun from a grab bag uh, from Interlacements. So I believe it's merino, but I have no idea. It's just kind of a mystery wool and I uh, spun it in this gradient. So, yep, there's that one. Uh, all right. My next work in progress is living in this bag that I got from Firebird Yarns in San Francisco. And it's got this hunky knitter on it. Um, love a pinup. So um, I had to get this when I was there. And this is a project you have not seen yet. This project has the uh, lovely distinction of being the first garment that I'm knitting a second time. So this is the Mount Pleasant top by Megan Nodecker of Pippin Pin. Uh, and I made one of these previously out of Lindy Chain uh, in a yellow color, which I'll insert a picture right here of me wearing. It's one of my favorite tops I've ever made. Just really love the shape and the drape and everything. So I decided um, a black version was in order because who doesn't need a cute little black lacy crop top? So this yarn is the Go Handmade Tencel Bamboo Fine. So this is from Hobie. <clears throat> um, I believe Go Handmade is one of their alternate uh, brand names and it is beautiful. Oh my God, this is such a lovely fabric that this is making um, and it is I guess I'm on a bamboo kick with this and this. Um, so it is 60% bamboo, 40% tensile, 
and the colorway is just black. Um, and yeah, uh, this was exactly what I needed this week, which I, again, I, I'm, I hate to be just vague booking <laughs> at you, but uh, I'll explain why everything was so unpleasant the last few weeks for us. Um, but, but yeah, uh, I actually had to cast this on twice. Uh, I cast this on in an airport at 5 a.m., got about an inch of the way through the lace, realized it was twisted. <sighs> you can be knitting for like 20 years and still end up having a project twisted. So, <laughs> but yeah, I am, uh, I am about this many stitches away from uh, separating for the armholes. So I am super excited about that. Yeah, this should be done in no time. So yeah, that is the Mount Pleasant. And I'm knitting the size large, uh, which is the same size I knit the, the first time. Uh, although I believe my bust size when I knit that large the first time was about three or four inches smaller, although it still fits really nicely. Um, I did add a few more increases on the bust shaping for this one, but not much, maybe about 12 extra stitches, um, just cause my gauge was coming out a little bit below the required gauge. So yeah, uh, my last work in progress, my last knitting or crocheting work in progress has seen absolutely no work so I'm literally just going to be flashing these socks and then saying goodbye to them um, <laughs> these were in a weird spot where I was running for traveling and I could not find the double pointing needles that I needed to do the uh, heel on there with and I could not find the little ball of little mini that I wanted to use for the toe I found both of them today, so these can finally get worked on again. And this is going to be the mini for that toe. So, um, so yeah, next time I'm really hoping to have at least one finished uh, sock, if not both, because frankly I am tired of reading off all of the yarn names <laughs> for these every time I podcast. So there's that. Um, Weaving. So my Ava dress fabric is coming across, uh, coming along really well. I've been really chipping away at it actually this weekend. Uh, Brian started playing one of the, the, the new Xenoblade game and it is a big JRPG ass JRPG. So uh, it was the perfect time for me to just sit in the same room and grab a puppy. <laughs> Oh, baby, what's up? Here, come. So it's the perfect time for me to just sit in the room, uh, weave away, kind of half pay attention to the the story and uh, spend some time with him uh, while he was playing. So, so yeah. What's up, Luca? What you got? Is this comfortable? Do you like this? This is what you wanted. Like this. That can't be right. Can I turn you? This little baby's getting her teeth done tomorrow morning. She does not know it. Um, so she will be knocked out most of the day. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Can I put you down? All right. Hi, Luca. <clears throat> All right. So, <laughs> um, so I've been weaving, uh, and it looks the same. So I'll show you a picture. I'll put in some, uh, video footage, but what I really wanted to talk about is how I wind my bobbins because, um, something I'd like you guys to know about me is that I'm cheap. Um, and I love to DIY things, uh, instead of paying for them. So, uh, when I started looking for bobbin winders, when I started weaving, uh, they all seemed crazy expensive for what they were. And I understand why, um, I understand it's a bit of a niche 
product and to make it, you know, it's work and uh, you gotta you gotta make your money somehow. But I figured um, that I didn't need to buy one of those because I had a thought. Um, on Amazon, they make these uh, mini lathes, mini lathes. Um, and I do not know how well that they would actually work as a lathe. Um, I have taken wood turning before on a full size, uh, uh, I wouldn't say industrial lathe, but a good, you know, hobby uh, woodworking lathe. Uh, and yeah, I so I thought thing that spins, thing that holds it on the other side, that's exactly what I need for weaving bobbins. So went on Amazon, I got this uh lathe for like 32 bucks and i will leave a link in the description for where i found that um and yeah i think it works pretty well as a a bobbin winder um in addition i 3d print all my own bobbins so uh not that it's been an issue but if i ever had to tweak it to work on the lathe better than they do um i have that option so yeah uh, i just figured since you know the project is kind of looking the same. I would add in some extra little things about uh, about my weaving process. So yeah, that's that. Um, so on to spinning. So my Shetland fleece project. Um, I have got a lot of one bobbin done. Um, I wouldn't say that this is a fully complete bobbin, but honestly, uh, I got bored. I did not want to work on the fleece project uh, any more uh, this weekend. I wanted to start something new, which I will show you in a second. Um, and I just didn't feel like processing any more of the fleece. So once I used up all the bits that I had processed, um, I took the bobbin off. So this is going to be on a little timeout um, until I work through uh, the next eight ounces of fiber that I'm going to show you. Um, so I started a new project with this fiber. So this is from uh, the Yarn Studio, no, hold on, the Fiber Studio at Yarn to Die For, which is a shop out of Charlotte, North Carolina. It used to be my local yarn store when I lived down there. Um, but I got this at the Carolina Fiber Fest, uh, which is held here in Raleigh in March, I believe. Um, and yeah, so a friend of mine uh, and I were looking and we were talking about getting out of your comfort zone. And it's funny because uh, when a lot of people talk about that, they talk about using lots of color and, you know, thing colors they don't normally wear or things like that. So for me, my comfort zone, out of my comfort zone is neutrals. Don't really know how to deal with neutrals. Not great with like creams or whites or browns. So this is me uh, challenging myself. <laughs> so that's the fiber. It is a uh, merino from Shashiko wool, which I had to look up. I did not know what that was. I believe it's some kind of, now I've forgotten, so I don't know why I brought it up and I'm trying to tell you about it. Um, I believe it's some kind of heritage yarn, uh, sheep or something like that. I will correct myself on the screen right now. Um, but anyway, this is what it's turning out like. So I split the braid in half um, and then I split it into very very thin uh, strips. I want the colors to repeat very quickly for that half and then for this half what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend it up on um, a hackle. So I, going back to the fact that I like to DIY things and not spend money on tools, um, there is a, uh, a woman called uh, Catherine, uh, her uh, YouTube channel is Craft Me Happy and her Instagram, I believe, as well. And I'll correct myself if I am incorrect. Uh, but she made a hackle out of uh, onion cut, cut, onion holders. So they're essentially these. One second, I will show you. They live just right behind you right now. I must have been wrong about where I put them. Cause they ain't there, they ain't there, they ain't there. 
What am I doing with my life? Not in there. <sighs> Just kidding. Don't know where they are. Anyway, they look like part of a hackle. They look like you. Know, they look like fiber combs. They just got big teeth, um, and yeah, I hoped I can find them because I really wanted to make that project this week. Um, anyway, so I'm going to blend this up so it's more of a heathered uh, one. So it'll be the heathered single with the more variegated single. It'll be a two ply. I hope it'll be enough for the body of a colorwork sweater. Um, it's eight ounces of fiber, so could go either way. So we will see. Um, oh yeah. And one thing I forgot to say is the name of this fiber is Carolina Wren. So I am a big, uh, I call, <laughs> instead of calling a bird, a bird watcher, I call it a bird pervert. Um, so I consider myself a bird pervert. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so I was very excited to have something um, of one of the birds that comes to my bird feeders. So, uh, that is all of my works in progress right now. So we'll chat a little bit of life stuff and I can talk about what I've been hinting at at why we had, I was late and why we had such a rough last two weeks. So, oh, I should have brought the game in here. Um, I mentioned on a previous podcast, my partner and I are game developers, um, board game developers. So we had two conventions in a row and we were selling a brand new game that we made called Kitty Combs. I'll insert information here. Um, so the first convention that we had was called GalaxyCon and it was local to us here in Raleigh. Um, big four day general sci-fi pop culture, everything nerdy convention. Unfortunately, this convention did not require uh, people to mask or be vaccinated for COVID. And even though me and my partner were masked basically the whole time, except when eating and drinking, I done came down with COVID. So this was the first time uh, for me. Uh, I lasted two and a half years without getting it, so um, I was vaccinated and boosted, so I was lucky to have a pretty mild time of it. I still don't recommend it. It was still a big bummer. Um, as soon as I found out, um, Brian was still testing negative, so I quarantined in this room. Um, I was stuck in here. Uh, for <laughs> uh, four days, um, which was fine. It has all my favorite things in it, like my yarn and my projects. Although I can tell you, I did not want to touch a single one of them while I was sick. <laughs> um, I think I did do a good amount of the body on this. Uh, it was straight stockinette, so I could uh, get going on that. But I thought being stuck in here that I would get uh, a lot done and I got a lot of sleeping done. Um, but the big unfortunate part of the whole story is that our big convention, which is held in Indianapolis and it's called Gen Con was happening less than a week from when uh, galaxy con ended. So I got sick on Monday and we were intending to fly out to Indianapolis on Wednesday. Um, I obviously did not do that <laughs> on Wednesday. So uh, Brian was still testing negative. So he uh, double masked um, to make sure that he was being safe to all around him. Went to Indianapolis, set everything up, woke up Thursday morning, felt like garbage, and of course was testing positive that day. <sighs> so... <clears throat> This is me freaking out on our, you know, the first day of our biggest convention of the year. Uh, <laughs> and luckily we had a friend who had driven up who was going to help us. Uh, the poor guy, the amazing friend, Nate, Nate, you rock, um, helped us out uh, by running the booth. And I played man in the chair and I found him 
some uh, some help, some hourly help. Uh, and finally, I was out of my quarantine period on Saturday, and so I was able to fly up to Indianapolis and finish out the event. Um, but yeah, it was stressful. <laughs> Not my favorite way to spend a week, that is for sure. Um, so yeah, but it all went well. Um, Brian and I are both well, healthy, and happy now. Um, happy to be done with this. With both the conventions and the illness. Um, those are our last conventions for the year. So, um, yeah, that is honestly all I've got. I have no acquisitions this week. Um, I got a set of needle tips from Amazon to work on a project that you will see next week. Uh, but other than that, I've got nothing else to to show. So we'll wrap this up and make it a short one. Um, and if you would like to find me anywhere on the internet, I am Crayon Disaster on Ravelry and Textilia. And I am Crayon Disaster Knits on Instagram. And uh, happy knitting touch all the soft things and yeah i will see you in two weeks right, bye